Welcome to Mischief FM, the home of magic over margins, TM. Very, very excited about our guest today is Julio Bruno, the CEO uh, of Global Media and Hospitality Business, Time Out Group. Yes, that brand, he's wearing the merch, you can see it. Uh, you'll know it as those awesome magazines bespoke to cities around the world. They're dedicated to unlocking all sorts of hidden gems across the lifestyle sector. It's bars, it's restaurants, it's things to do. If a city was your playground, Time Out is your treasure map, but it's so much more than a publication. Time Out has done an absolutely incredible job of diversifying its portfolio in recent years, and we'll get into all of that. But first, Julio, how the hell are you? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Oliver. I am so um, happy to be here first, and congrats on your new gig. You know, we know each other from some time before and previous stuff, so I'm so happy you're here with Mischief. Well, I'm doing great. I'm today in Madrid um, by way of Dubai, where we opened the new Tamar market, and um, returning to London a couple of weeks, and, uh, you know, everything seems to be beginning to look look a bit better you know a little bit the, the world is opening up a little bit and you know the renaissance is coming talk to us a little bit before we get into your business we talk about timeout group and all the fantastic exciting things that you've been doing who is julio bruno you're you're like an international man of mystery than the, the world's most exotic man whenever i see you on social media you're somewhere different i know it's part of the job you've got timeout markets all, all over the world but how did you get to where you are right now give us like your story in 60 seconds Oh my God, yeah. Well, I love that man of mystery. Uh, well, I chose several years ago to come to Time Out, almost six years ago. I was working uh, or have just left TripAdvisor uh, in New York, but I, I, I was returning to Europe and that's what I was looking for. You know, how could I use some of the skills that I have gained for many years and to get into to a company that I wanted to, to manage, to lead? And that's how I got to time out. Uh, before that, you know, as I said, trip advisor, travel port, Diageo, energizer. So I came a combination of a marketeer, you know, in, 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 in consumer brands, but also then into commercial sales, uh, revenue, business development, and always between, you know, media, e-commerce, technology, you know, digital transformation. Um, and, and the one thing that I always had in my life is that I always travel so much uh, for work and for pleasure that I was Mr. Timeout before I knew I was Mr. Timeout. And I say that with obviously respect to our belated, um, uh, now deceased uh, founder, Tony Elliott, um, whom I love a lot and he liked me very much. And the thing is that every friend for many, many years, Julio, I'm going to, Tokyo, where should I go? Come on, what, we, what is the right place? And I would always be that kind of man. And then even if I didn't know, I would find out. So now I have the opportunity to be in a company where I can take all that and put it uh, to play here. And you know, what else that you want to do? This is this is the happiness business. You know, what, you know, going out, theater, place, events, music, around the world, travel, you know, it's. It's fantastic. So to me, it's like a dream job, you know, with all the nuances of, of, of running a company, but still a, a dream company. So look, I mean, it's time out. The brand is time out. But for the past year, it's been time in, uh, like quite, quite literally, we've been spending time in. But I know that the brand has pivoted. And I say that word knowing it's used a ton, overused by marketers around the world. But the brand has really, has really pivoted to become time in um, to support businesses and cities from home. So just talk, we don't want to dwell on it too much because we've got exciting things coming up. We're, there's like a light at the end of the tunnel now. We're about to go back out. But what's happened over, over the past year? Talk about how the business has changed because it's a business of going out and now we're in. Um, yes, I mean, when we did that, as you call it, pivot, or, it, it was a question of, it was 13th March when we decided to close down the offices and a lot of the cities were closing down themselves and we said oh my god if the cities are closing down what we talk is going out time out and you know i was talking to the general manager in barcelona who said we cannot come up with a magazine to the streets because we are in a lockdown so I said, well, if you cannot be time out, we'll have to be time in. And at that moment, that was the moment. And within a few hours, we had the logo prepared, send it worldwide to everybody, and have the last two numbers in Time Out New York and Time Out London printed with time in. 
and it was the last number we were giving in the streets for a long time. And that, but that meant much more than that. That was the cosmetics of it. But it was a revolution in our in our uh, content departments to start showcasing things to do from home. You know, not just streaming <laughs> TV or uh, or music, but what other things you could be doing, and how can you discover. You know, like those, like the the Met was putting these there online, or uh, Shakespeare uh, Company was doing that, and that to showcase that what created a whole new way of thinking about our own content. Because how do you keep relevant if you are called time out when the whole world is timing? So besides they give you on the gimmick, it was really a, a change in we thinking about our consumer in a different circumstances that we nobody expected. And that was obviously um, a success in terms of audience. We grew 29% the audience year on year, the first six months, because the people you know, reacted to that. But it's true that after several months, people start getting fatigued. When are we going back to normality? I want to be out. And then the summer, as you know, a lot of the cities reopen and then only to close again. So it has been a year now of out and in, time out, time in. And what we like to say is that we are with you, whether you're out or you're in. And now we have both content there in our websites uh, because that's what people need. They need a helping hand to tell them, you know, these are the things that either you can do now or you should be preparing to do a bit later. And you know, so the, the bucket list that I'm sure you have created yourself, all the places you want to go when this goes over. A lot of people will think of Time Out traditionally as a publication, but when we last met, um, you were quadrupling down on the market side of things. You got Time Out Market, you're wearing a Time Out Market Miami. Actually, when we met, I think you were just about to launch Time Out Market My Miami. So you've got a bunch of these markets around the world. They're fantastic. You were going so hard on them. I think we wrote a story in the headline was go hard or go home. And it was in, in your- I book. remember that one, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so you, you were quadrupling down on the business of going outside. COVID happened. What's happening with the markets right now? How have they, how have they maintained over, over this time, and what's the future of them? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I was mentioning the 13th of March we close our offices, but by the 16th of March of 2020 we close all our markets worldwide, and that was very painful, as you can imagine. But the regulations, you know, force us to close. You know, all the restaurants, you know upwards of 125 restaurants worldwide inside of our markets um, in, in six cities, you know, from Lisbon to Montreal to New York to Miami. Um, and then we were able to reopen most of them in the summer, but with a lot of restrictions. So we have to change and we put have to, put, you know, we already have the HVAC filters, but we have the HIPAA filters and then we have to do something else and create a spacing and take chairs out and put, partitions and everything became, you know, very uh, safety orientated. So it was, and all the restrictions meant that it was a different experience for everybody, right? I guess as consumers, we just wanted to go out last summer and were happy to have something ongoing. But obviously when we had to close again, again, because of regulations, that was quite tough because it happened twice. You know, the whole world thought this is gonna be a few months and then it was many more months and now it's over a year. Um, so that has been very painful for us, for our team, for obviously our consumers and, and all for our chefs who work in, in those markets and all their staff. But where we are now is that we reopened Tamar Market Miami just like last month. Last week, I was in Dubai with my team opening the incredible Tamar Market Dubai for the first time. That was an inauguration. That was in just a reopening. Um, and the one in Dubai, just in the center of the Sukh Al Bahar, opposite the Burj Khalifa, by the Dubai Mall, the most incredible place with the best, best, best chefs of Dubai. Wonderful place. So I went, I went there and now we are planning to open uh, Boston, York, Chicago, reopen them in the next uh, six, seven weeks, you know, between May, oh, wow. May and June and Lisbon as well. So, you know, with the, some places with some restrictions, most places with fewer restrictions. So we are delighted. And, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, we signed another contract with the time market Abu Dhabi, for instance. So there has been we have continued because, you know, people, developers are seeing time market as part of the solution. And as you look to go back out into the world, 
let's get a little bit nerdy about the marketing and then the creative agency side of things. So I, I don't know anything about how that works on your side. You're going to be wanting to tell a bunch of people that you're reopening. Is there going to be a big marketing push? My question to you is, what's your marketing team look like? Do you have an in-house? Do you work with agency partners? What, what happens there? You've obviously got a big media juggernaut behind you to help with, with all of that. So just talk about the, the marketing aspects of what you do. So, well, I'm delighted we have a chief marketing officer, Sumindi Perez, based in New York, uh, who has a ton, ton of, you know, experience, and she's, um, she has a great team with her, PR team, CRM, and obviously marketing managers, marketing managers for the, for the markets, as well as the media side with, uh, with other people in her team. Um, we do work with uh, different kinds of agencies, uh, you know, for creative agencies sometimes, but obviously we have our own in-house creative, the, what we call the timeout studio. So the good thing about timeout media side of the business is that it is very creative. So obviously not only we create content, but also the timeout markets are curated by the timeout editors. They are the ones who choose who, who, who are the best shares of every category in every city. So it is a symbiotic relationship between media and markets. And that is what Sumindi and her team manage that sometimes we put like a yin and yang media yeah. market and how it is a, a, a circle that retrofits of each other, you know, the market and the media. And that makes us very unique because you have uh, a food and cultural market because you know it's not only about the food all the events that we do in the markets all the theater that happens or i don't know drag queen storytelling in the mornings or uh you know the, the cast of uh, some broadway shows going there and singing a cappella or the comedy nights uh, bingo nights are sometimes but the maybe drag drag queen bingo or something that is different and it's very time out and it's very out there and, and it's fun and, and you know that is part of the brand so that is also marketing and PR so we have a, a a mixture of the two and then of course we do have PR agencies that help us with the different launches in every market tend to be local uh, agencies that know the local uh, scene and, uh, and the city and that's how we work and then you know, as we need more and as we grow as a company, we will expand. But, you know, it has been very tough for us during COVID. And that's why we have to be careful about, you know, how do we employ all our time and our resources going forward. I think that's completely fair. It sounds like you've got quite a sturdy in-house situation going on there when it comes to your marketing. When you bring in an outside party, a, party, a third party, um, in terms of creative agency or even PR shop, what do you look for in that? Are you bringing someone in to bring something completely different on the creative side? Just talk about like what what you what you want to see in a third party partner. So um, we, because we are, you know, time out a brand of fifty two years, a creative brand. We love creativity, and we want people who understand who we are as well, you know, a little bit mischievous, a little bit, well, you sing a little bit your name, but okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, fun, poking fun at ourselves. And then we look people that actually know what they do and they execute fast. You know, it's very important for us that the execution is there because when you are a B2B brand, that's one thing, but when you're a B2C brand, you know, like Tamar Market, you are there with the consumer every day. And you cannot just like, uh, you know, let me talk to you about your explorer things that you need to tell me how that's going to work. Sometimes I call it guerrilla marketing. Yeah. We like that, yeah. <laughs> and, and that is part that I'm, I'm sure that Sumindi was here. She will say, no, no, Julio, how can you say that? But, but there is part of that. Now, obviously, that's part of my vision there. But obviously, uh, uh, Sumindi and her team you know, manage this in a very specific way. But I think that, that we, we want partners who actually like the brand, that they can add value. Because if it's to do what we're already doing, then, then we can do it. So what we need is, you know, people adding value. You've got a real powerful bird's eye view, a real unique bird's eye view of all of the innovative ideas that cities, bars and restaurants are shaping the way that we you know, live, eat and unwind. What in this time or right now is really capturing your attention? Who's doing it differently and what have you been surprised by? Well, um, if you're a brand today that obviously being in delivery or anything to do online, clearly this has been your moment, right? And I mean, we have seen that 
uh, with many brands that have taken this moment and said, just go 100%. But I also see brands, and I don't like to, to mention brands in, in media only because, but, but if you think somebody like The Independent in the UK, you know, went completely online, before that, but now they really grew there. You can see how um, other uh, publications or what we call publications have really changed the way they present themselves to a new world where they want, I mean, and they are not that competitors because obviously we are not in the news business, but how people are reading news and how you want to get that information and using a combination of a lot of social media together with, uh, you know your all assets is quite good you know yes if you're thinking about innovation you know you could mention TikTok and even twitch you know roblox I mean, another one there are some companies have been doing hey how can you use that for this how can you use this for communicating to people in a different way than before um and you say well that's already a social kind of media company no they are not they became something uh, something more Julio, thank you so much for your time and your insight. I can't finish this without asking this question. Obviously, we keep saying international matter mystery. You're, you're well seasoned. You're very, very traveled. Um, we fast forward a couple of months or I don't even want to put a time on it now because we don't know when, when it's actually going to reopen. But the world is reopened. Let's put our minds there. Where, where are you going? Where is the hidden gem in the world, be that a city, a bar or anything that you kind of feel uncomfortable sharing with the world because you don't want people to go there because you love it so much? Oh my God, but I couldn't tell you that because then you will go there. Well, then give us like your second or third favorite. Okay. There is a place in the Northwest of Spain that is called Ogrove, O-G-R-O-V-E, with the most incredible beaches you can imagine, with almost nobody, where in the morning the fog will come in like in a dystopian movie, the fog on the beach of this is, is, is warm and then and the rocks are there and you don't know what you're getting into a horror movie or something, but it's so beautiful and the food is excellent and there are few people there. So hush, don't tell them. Mm -hmm.